Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to call to order the special meeting uh, of the CRA, Community Redevelopment Agency. Today is August 26, 2019. It is 3.33 p.m. Uh, do we have any cards? Okay. Comments from the board? Uh, Commissioner Shove? None today. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Madam President? No, Mayor. Uh, Commissioner Nearing? No. No. No comments. Uh, Commissioner Baduzzi? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor has no comments. Mr. Ward, are there any additions, deletions, reorganization of the agenda? No, Mayor. Okay. We will go straight into the agenda. Item two, presentation of the draft fiscal year 2020 CRA strategic finance plan for the city center community redevelopment agency. Good afternoon, Mayor Commissioners, Allison Justice, Deputy Director. Um, if you don't mind, Mr. Ward didn't mention it, but I would like to switch the... Oh, oh. Sorry, I would like to do the Northwood Pleasant City presentation first, if commissioners no, don't I mind. asked if there was any reorganization of the agenda. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that's you okay, know, I, that's I, okay. I looked at it and meant to do we're, that. We're pretty flexible around here. <laughs> yes, we may start with right. the uh, item three instead of item two. Thank Let you, me read Mayor. into the record. Presentation of the draft fiscal year 2020 CRA strategic finance plan for the Northwood Pleasant City community redevelopment area. Now, what are we doing after this one? Are we going back to downtown? We'll or? do the city center last. Okay. I also or have last. Rafael Clemente and Mary Pinnock here to do That's their fine. presentations as part of that. As Very well. good. Very so. good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for the Northwood Pleasant City CRA, this is a draft presentation. I will be back in uh, the end of September for the final approval. Uh, we have been to the CRA Advisory Board um, with this draft presentation. I will be in front of them as well in September for final approval. Uh, just as a, a little background, we give a five-year summary of the strategic fi finance plan, uh, revenues and expenditures, and then I will break down the summary for 2019-2020 and uh, go through some of the projects on the different target areas. Uh, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the five-year portion. This is part of your, you'll see this as part of the, the plan document, um, but these are the five years totaled up. So it's a five-year, uh, it's your carry-forward balance. It's five years of tax increment, um, and it kind of gives a snapshot so we can break down projects that are coming potentially in the future on this. Uh, so really for, for this more importantly would be the um, the one year look at 2020 fiscal year 2020 uh, we do have a carry forward balance of 3.9 million dollars this these are projects that have already been allocated so we've uh, got some in curry park there's some projects we've already allocated funding we just haven't expended it yet uh, new tax increment 4.2 million was a 6.8 percent increase over fiscal year 2019 um, for total uh, sources of $8.3 million. And then you'll see below are the uses of the funds. Uh, debt service of $1.7 million. And I've got a slide next that'll tell you a little bit about what that debt service was. Um, the city cost allocation, which is to city departments, personnel, which is CRA staff, innovative policing, uh, which are some overtime details that we provide in Northwood Village, along Broadway and Curry Park. Uh, operations and target area initiatives, which we'll break down here next. And then we have the reserve for future projects. Uh, those are for items that tend to come up throughout the year that we, that we have that we can put towards additional projects. Can, can I interrupt you for a minute? Sure. Uh, can you articulate uh, what innovative policing is uh, for the public, I know, uh, and, and also how necessary that is for it to be innovative and not just regular? Correct. Innovative policing um, is part of this, the, CRA statute, we can provide community policing services, innovative policing. Um, what what we, we fund are overtime details, special details, undercover stings, uh, bicycle details, things like new segues or equipment for innovative policing, um, cameras. So things that are above and beyond regular policing duties is what the CRA is able to fund in a CRA district. Thank you. Um, just, just for the pu public's sake and for the commission, new commissioners, um, in, in 2005, we issued a series of two, two different bonds. It totaled the amount of 25, 
$16.7 million. We refinanced them in 2015 for $16.5 million. These, these bonds mature in 2035, so that was the $1.7 million you see as an annual debt service to these bonds. Um, in the middle is a snapshot of, of what these bond proceeds covered, which was infrastructure, uh, incentives, acquisition, uh, as well as a uh, buffer wall that we constructed along uh, Pleasant City, along the, along the uh, CSX tracks. So just to break down, um, Mary Place infrastructure was all funded by this agency through that bond, 24th and 25th Street. Uh, we purchased the anchor site land with it, as well as some improvements on Windsor Avenue, again, the railroad buffer, incentives, and some other <coughs> capital improvements. We do have a remainder, a little remainder left in that, that bond. That was part of our carry forward amount. That is being um, targeted for Curry Park infrastructure. Because those, those bonds can't be used for marketing, can't be used for security. It's all infrastructure expenditures. Uh, yes, Commissioner Schultz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ms. Justice, if, if you would, off the top of your head, I don't know if you know or if this is an answer that, that is for later, on those projects that were bond funded, did we execute on every single one of those projects or are there still bond funds available um, to do any of this work? Those, are all, those were all expended at the topics with the exception of the last item, which was the remaining amount that we have left, which is currently targeted towards Curry Park. It has not been, so there are $650,000 remaining out of that, that bond. Everything else was expended. Okay, and will that 650000 then be used with the redesign of Curry Park? Correct. Okay, thank you. I'd quickly kind of to go through the target areas, uh, Pleasant City, I'm just going to highlight some of the, the major expenditures and changes. Uh, we do have some property acquisition. We're looking um, this next year at doing some some work and some master planning of the Blum Park area between Pinewood and Spruce and 23rd and 22nd Street, working with the Housing Authority and HCD. So there are two properties that we do not currently own along there that we're, we're currently uh, considering for acquisition. So uh, that is the anticipated funding for those. As well as funding, obviously, for some marketing incentives, uh, et cetera. Again, the Curry Corridor, and this is where you see a, a majority of the funding in the Northwood Pleasant City target area in 2020 is for the redesign of Curry Park. Um, as you, you all know, we do not have a final number on what that design cost will be, but we are allocating um, right now about $2.4 million for it. Uh, once we get further in the negotiations, we can reallocate funding that's not expended in that. Does that include the 650000 that we referenced earlier? That does include the 650000 correct. Uh, for the Northwood Village target area, we... If I could, I have a question yes, before Madam we move President. on from that. Thank you. So you said if this comes in above our budget, we would expend other funds. Which other funds were you talking about? So if this comes, if the design fee would happen to come in above the, the, what we have budgeted, what we would do is we would do a budget transfer from reserves. So the reserves that we have of the 600,000 would be shifted. You would, it would come back as an F resolution to amend our budget if we so needed. Okay. We try and budget it so we don't have to do that, but you know, occasionally when the costs come in. Okay, so you're talking about the reserves that we talked about on one of the earlier Correct. slides. Great, thank you. For the Northwood Village target area, um, a majority of funding goes uh, to the marketing initiatives. Um, we'll have a full, a full-blown marketing plan developed uh, before our budgets for the marketing. Um, the incentives, we've got a new incentive program that will be presented to you uh, uh, on budget approval uh, that Sarah Blake will be presenting to you, and as well as security. So private security, uh, we have estimated, and this is a little up from last year. Um, we know that there's going to be some changes in security, and, and we want to make sure we support the security services. Madam President. Thank you. I appreciate the funding that's going into business attraction, business development, and the marketing here. I'm just curious as to the process of involving the merchants and uh, the business owners in this area? So um, we attend all of the merchant association 
meetings. We're in, in regular contact with the merchants. So we, we work with them. If we do an event or we do promotions, we work with them on specific promotions. Uh, we also are in the process of a developing, developing a grant program where they can utilize event funds to do their own events and we support them. So for instance, Art Night Out is not our event, it's the merchant's event, but we support them through sponsorships. So those, that, that is also part of these marketing initiatives as well, as well as advertising, PR, et cetera. Commissioner Neary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you mentioned that the security, the private security, that there'd be some changes. Can you just remind me what, what the procurement process is? Or you said we're going to be changing our security in that area, our private security. Did you say that? Or yes, we do. Well, I mean, cur currently we have Giddens security. They are on a month to month. I know the mayor has some, is working on some initiatives for, for security. I don't have the answer to how, to, how that's going to look in the, in the future. I know that's administratively still being still being worked out if there's going to be changes to the security. If, if it does, uh, does that come before this board or is that um, at the administration level what, in terms of decisions, uh, Mr. Ward? Uh, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, everything we do will come back before you, although it'll be coordinated, I think, in an overall plan that'll okay. come from administration. So we're going to take our guidance from them. And I think primary thing that we've done this year is uh, increase the funding amount that's available for security. I think we had 150 last right. year, and we raised it for this year, anticipating there may be some more expenses. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be part of a comprehensive um, change. I think we're going to be piggybacking on another uh, municipality uh, for the, the the company. So, uh, since it will have a, a fiscal impact, it will come before this board for okay. approval. Great. Thanks. Okay, uh, moving on to the industrial park target area, which is west of the CSX between Windsor and the, the CSX tracks. Uh, we do have a, f a couple of events that are produced over there for the Storm of 28 Memorial site. We also do a tour with the artists, an open studios tour with the artists in the industrial district. Um, we do have some incentive funding available and there are some top, maybe some property acquisition um, based on future initiatives, redevelopment initiatives. Um, one item that we've discussed f over the last couple of years is potentially a commercial kitchen. If we wouldn't, wanted to enter into that, um, that, the industrial district would likely be a, a place where a facility could be located for a commercial kitchen. So those are the types of things that we would look at uh, as far as redevelopment and property acquisition. Uh, Commissioner Show, if you had a question. Thank you, Mayor, and, and I want to thank the CRA because I know they work closely with the Storm of 28 celebration, but even as I look at this photo, I'm, I'm looking at the Storm of 28. I don't know whether it falls to the CRA and some of the things we're doing here or over to parks, but you know some of these things that are simple, we're looking at a picture that, that are missing letters and, and dates, and if we could do some simple improvements there, I think the site's really important for us to focus our attention. They have an upcoming anniversary, and it's a, a good time for us to shine. Um, some some light on the history that's there and honor the folks um, that, that have relatives, et cetera, there. Good point. Uh, for the Broadway target area, uh, we still do want to update the zoning regulations for BMUD. This has been on the, on the books for a while, and I will um, tell the, the mayor and commissioners that um, one of the reasons we have not moved forward with it is that the city is also in conjunction working on a lane elimination south of 45th Street. Um, it's kind of important to know what the right-of-way section will, will be before we make those zoning changes. So uh, we're hoping that that's moving forward. Um, I, I hear there's more to come on that in the upcoming months. Commissioner Shove. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in, our, in our target zones, the Broadway corridor tends to be somewhat unique in our district in that it's vertical and fairly lengthy compared to some of our more dense areas. Is there a way, and I don't know that it even needs to be in, in the legal sense of, of CRAs, um, but just as an internal mechanism that we could apply a North Broadway, South Broadway target area so that when we're looking at the spend along Broadway and the projects and, and incentives, et cetera, there's a way for us to track um, you know, I think there's a, there's a lot of feel on um, the neighborhoods surrounding Broadway about where funds are spent and if, if they're spent completely on the south end or completely on the north end, it doesn't necessarily affect the surrounding areas as much as some of our other target areas. So if we could look to see if there's a mechanism to track expenses and report by just that segment 
I mean, 45th Street is a, a good way to, mm -hmm. to divide it to North and South Broadway, if right. possible. Okay. Commissioner Neary. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Just a, a quick comment, which is, uh, you know, the zoning regulations, this is something since I've been on the commission and, and then obviously in the city, um, specifically to Broadway, um, th there has been, you know, little to no change. And we know that a, a great reason or, or an explanation for that has really been around the zoning. So just a comment to say whatever we can do to support, because I do believe out of everything that we've tried, that that is the one kind of return on investment that we'll see if we can get to that point where we actually can, can make some adjustments and really look at the zoning is where we'll see some real change along Broadway. So as much as we can highlight and, and, and press forward on that, I think it'd be, I think it'd be great. Uh, again, we also have some, some strategic land acquisition. There's a couple of, of pretty severely blighted properties that, we would, um, that we're looking at on, along the Broadway corridor. Again, those would come back before the, before the commission. And other target area, these, this just covers the entire district. So you'll see landscape maintenance is the major um, expenditure here. This is for Scott Lewis's team to do. Uh, they're not only in Northwood Village, they also are maintaining along Spruce and Pleasant City. Uh, we also have mowing that takes place for our lots that are up and down Broadway, Pleasant City, um, as well as in Northwood Village. Uh, we also had a request, a uh, potential request for some additional cameras from the police. We have put the funding in there. We haven't gotten a, an official request yet, so it is, it is allocated if that request does move forward. So. Commissioner Neary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I realize under consultants it's a de minimis amount given the, the, the total budget, but I, I believe at one time this board would get an idea of the menu of consultants that we were going to be using in our CRA district? I can probably get you something. I will say, I will tell you some of it is things like getting surveys, appraisals. I mean, there is a, there is a, a very long list of what those types of consultants could be because usually they, because usually they are a minimal uh, expenditure. But I, I mean, I don't have a, I don't think we have an issue getting you a list of, of those services. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that is all for my presentation on Northwood Pleasant City, if you have any additional. Any further questions, comments? Okay, so now we're going to downtown, correct? Yes, no, sir. no, not downtown. Yes, correct. We're going to downtown. Okay. Uh, presentation of the draft fiscal year 2020 CRA strategic finance plan for the city center community redevelopment agency. Okay. Mayor Commissioners, I will, again, this is in the same format um, as the Northwood Pleasant City CRA. Uh, just a snapshot of the sources and uses for uh, the five-year period. Um, and I will, I'm going to skip forward to the, to the one year. If anybody has any questions on the five-year, I'm happy to go through that. Uh, for 2020, uh, we have a carry forward balance of about 25 million. Again, this will this accounts for projects and the sunset things that we've already had in the um, on the books for a, for a while. Uh, we did have a 10 and a half percent increase in the downtown city center CRA, 38 million dollars in tax increment for estimated for next year. Uh, we have a grant for the sunset. We actually have a couple of grants. We've already received some of the funding, some of the grant funding for the sunset, but we have another one coming forward this year. Um, obviously, these are lease payments, rental income, and you'll notice on the TDR sale of St. Patrick's, you'll see, you'll see an expenditure that relates to this. So we are purchasing the TDRs, and then we are selling them again. So you'll see a, a revenue and an and a expenditure on it. And then, of course, the series two, 2019 bond financing is also part of our, our sources this year. Before you move, uh, sure. Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Just had a question about the carry forward balance. I know that we had talked about there are some limitations on how far in advance or how far along we can carry forward these funds. Can you tell us a little bit more about that policy and if, it's, if, it, if these funds go past that amount, do we have to acknowledge it and vote to be able to continue moving them forward? Correct. Um, again, Commissioner, statutorily, the CRA can only have projects on the books for three years. Um, obviously, we have 
projects that, that last longer than that. So if it's in progress, it can go longer than three years, but we cannot put funding in a project and let it sit for five years and never spend it. Um, again, the, the Sunset Lounge is an example of, we had maybe seven million, we're increasing the funding this year. So when you see the expenditure, part of it is carry forward that we already had and part of it is, is this year. So again, the rule is just that you can't have a project on the books for more than three years without doing taking something action. about it. Okay. Taking action. Great. Correct. Thank you. Commissioner Schof. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I know at the state level, CRAs have a number of discussions going on, but I can't help but look at this slide and see that there's $118 million in the downtown CRA and $8 million in the Northwood Pleasant City CRA, and I think the needs for each are distinctly different. And if we could continue that conversation to say, how can we try to use our CRA funds in both our CRAs to benefit the areas that need them the most? Um, you know, looking at the numbers in black and white in front of you, I think really says a message to me that if, if there's the ability to address some of the, the areas of need using CRA funds, that I think we should continue to explore what those might possibly be from a legal perspective. You mean shifting from the downtown CRA to Northwood? Um, I mean using CRA funds within both of our CRAs, so the potential to merge our two CRAs so that the city of West Palm Beach would potentially have one CRA or another mechanism by which um, maybe other cities uh, have done something similar, um, some sort of lending program between the two CRAs. Um, I'm not a CRA expert or a legal expert in that, in that way, but I feel like perhaps there might be a way that we could use funds designated to eliminate blight to address other blighted areas that we have within our, our two CRAs. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not sure there is a legal way, but I guess we can have City Attorney, look I'll, at I'll look at your suggestions. Thank you. Okay, for the uses, um, again, we have a debt service, our debt service in the downtown CRA. This reflects the $78 million bond that we just received, as well as the refinance bond from 2006 as well. Uh, personnel, city cost allocation, again, this is the same breakdown as the Northwood Pleasant City CRA. Um, just for, for the board's uh, knowledge, it is a 90%, typically a 90%, 10% split, so 90 per, downtown pays for 90% of the cost, Northwood Pleasant City pays for 10%. Um, our tax increment split, this is our, you know, our city place agreement, as well as some other agreements that we have in place uh, for tax increment. And then I'll have Rafael Clemente and Mary Pinnock come up and talk about the DDA work plan. Rafael talked about the DDA work plan, and Mary will talk a little bit about the waterfront um, work plan. So those are two of the larger expenditures downtown that, that, that have different uh, agencies that are implementing them. So for the Northwest Target Area, uh, these are projects, again, that we've been working on, uh, multi-year projects, uh, the Sunset Lounge, Heart and Soul Park. Uh, we have the Heritage Alley and 7th Street. I will tell you both, you know, uh, Heart and Sunset Lounge has already been approved, so construction will start very shortly on that. Heart and Soul Park and Heritage Alley and 7th Street will be starting by January. Those items will be in front of this uh, board and the commission for face of the city as well as, fund as funding approval in the next couple of months. Mickens Moore properties, we're working on some design for, um, for the Mickens Moore properties on, on division, uh, the Alice Moore house and, and the property across the street. Uh, 719 Sapadilla is the restaurant at the, at the corner across from Queen of Sheba. Uh, Tamarind Avenue Streetscape, uh, you'll be seeing something on that, that uh, soon, I hope. Uh, we do have uh, costs in on Tamron Avenue, so we're still working through funding sources for that project, but hopefully we can start on that shortly. Um, again, a historic home re rehabilitation, the infill houses that we continue to work on, incentives, events, and of course the um, NCAT training facility. So I, I kind of broke down a little bit of the projects. This is the funding that's attached to them. Um, again, you'll see our incentives, business incentives of $700,000. It's substantial in the historic Northwest. We do have some substantial projects that we believe are coming forward and um, businesses that are looking for incentives. So we want to make sure that we're um, that, that we 
do cover those. That is one area that we that we continue to receive a lot of, of inquiries about in the historic Northwest. Um, cleaning green team operations, uh, again, general repair and maintenance. I'll go through these. If you have any questions, I'll... The clean and green team, that contract is up for renewal, correct? The, the clean and green team's contract is up for renewal. We are going out to bid on that. Uh, we are extending, uh, doing a six months extension on the contract to make sure we don't have any lapse of, uh, of, of time, but we are, yes, How we are How quickly will we hit the street with RFP? It is, it is in the hands of procurement right now, so I will, I will talk to Josephine about it. Commissioner Neary. <clears throat> Thank you. Could, could you go back one sure. slide? So similar to the, um, the request around consulting services, yes. if we could just tie that in. And then a question about the clean and green contract. Was that a, I just can't recall, I think I was on this commission when we decided, was it a procurement that we put out the first time for that? Or I believe we, so, yes. Um, this has been a, it's been a long standing, it has been a relationship with NCCI. I don't believe it went out, it didn't go out for procurement at, at that time uh, when we started the program, the, the Clean and Green program. But we've made the decision to, to send it out now at this point in time. Correct. Yeah, so the, the contract has expired, it's yes. up for renewal, and I think it would be appropriate to put it out for bid, see what other uh, groups, agencies might be interested in make a determination. Okay, and that comes back before this board? Absolutely. Correct. Okay, thank you. A quick question on the consulting services. Do we have a group of consultants that we work with and it rotate the different contracts? We how do. Did, how is that handled? We do, we have, uh, in particular in the CRA, we have a architectural group that we work with. Uh, we went out for an RFQ. I believe three years ago, we received nine proposals. We selected all nine of the firms we have contracts with. We're just renewing them now. They have, they can, they have the ability to get two renewals on those, uh, those firms. So we have, um, like I said, most of it in this area is for architectural services. That's what we utilize the most. Um, we are gonna be part of the city's new engineering um, bid that they put out as well so we can utilize some of those engineers and planners as well so um, planning services you don't have to go out if you're under fifty thousand dollars architectural services we have a pool of architects that we work with so and i can get you all the, those lists that list good thank you uh, again the the sunset lounge um, mr ward had presented what he we believe is going to be the the cost for that, so that is, that is indicated in this um, budget, as well as some operational costs. This will handle grand opening, uh, promotions, some things that, things that we'll need to do before the opening of the Sunset Lounge. Uh, the uh, Heritage Alley business creation, that is for the vertical houses, businesses that are going on to the, so that's actually for the, the structures. Um, the other funding is for the alley itself and 7th Street. That 1.8 million is, is specifically for the, the buildings that are gonna be built on there. And again, if you go down below to infrastructure and streetscape, a lot of this is funded through the bond. We have some TIF funding, some bond funding, so that's why you'll see kind of the split out of, um, you know, we have a million and a half for 7th Street and Heritage Alley. The remainder of it is being funded through the bond. So um, there's multiple sources of funding to get to these projects. And when we come back for the GMP, you'll see the breakdown of where all the funding is, is coming from on these. Here's an example. This is a, the proposed bond projects in the Northwest area, target area, um, Tamron Streetscape, like I said, that is to be determined um, what the funding will be from the bond there, but uh, we do have funding available already for 7th Street, Heritage Alley, Heart and Soul Park Development, and the future NCAP building here. Uh, for the Clear Lake target area, this is bond for the Tamron Streetscape from Okeechobee to Banyan. They're doing some mobility improvements, uh, 
potentially a street light. I think, he, you know, this is, this is being coordinated by Wen Dang, and it's a, it is a transportation, more of a transportation project and mobility from the mobility plan. Rollsford Park, um, we have some, some land acquisition we're looking at as part of the Palm Beach Lakes bridge expansion uh, and rebuild. Uh, because of the of the widening of the bridge, there's some land that we're that we're looking to acquire there, um, as well as some business incentives. Okay, Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. Before we move on to downtown, I just have a question about um, the next phase of this. I know that you said this is the draft presentation, and you know this is quite a hearty list of projects in the northwest target area and the map is rather small i'm curious is the next presentation go into a little bit more detail of the timing of these projects and where we are on all of these i, I typically on the second one do not because i'm this is the this is the the part where i would like to receive commissioner feedback on whether you want to fund these projects or or not and like i said most of them have been in the have been in the pipeline, um, but I'm happy to I'm happy to do it in whatever. Well, maybe even before that meeting, then a list of just the timeline of these. I think that that would be helpful to see. I can, we can put together a timeline, of course. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Shelf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in in the widening project at Palm Beach Lakes, um, it, it just seems like a, a good time to maybe see if there was an update on the convenience store that's there on the corner. And I know the CRA owns the building directly behind it. So would these funds be used to try to develop that area? That well, that is is we're still working on acquiring the property. So that is in the acquisition in the historic northwest. That area that's actually in the historic northwest. Okay. Um, uh, the other side of the tracks is Brelsford Park area. Um, but yes, we are working on acquisition of that property currently. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Neary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I think in, this, in the same uh, vein as uh, Commissioner Lambert in terms of the timing, but I, and I think you, you brought it up in your comments, it really becomes you have uh, very important projects. They all, on their own merit, can be considered very important projects, but a finite amount of time and resources so that this board really has to make a decision, decision on it. So, for example, like the lighting on Rosemary, whether that's low-hanging fruit or not, I believe, you know, as one-fifth of this board, that to me that's a priority, you know, lighting in our communities, lighting, you know, from a safety issue and whatnot. So just remind me when... Like you've just heard that, but when when are we making our um, uh, thoughts known to to you, to Mr. Ward, to you in terms of what we sense as the priorities or how? Hey, commissioners, uh, <clears throat> you know I'm pleased to report to you that um, on Rosemary between Eighth uh, and Eleventh Street, we're going to start that work immediately. I think probably within the next month. Okay. They've made a decision on the um, on the equipment and that sort of thing, and then uh, because there's another funding source on the balance between uh, Banyan and um, and Eighth, uh, that'll lag a couple of months. But we're already looking at uh, in, in, at putting that in place. And uh, here's a good example: uh, the land on the east side of Rosemary from Seventh Street almost to Eleventh is owned by CMEX, as you may know. And uh, we looked at the sidewalk conditions along there, and they're very narrow sidewalks to begin with, three-foot sidewalks. They're not the large things. The, uh, and the suggestion initially was, well, let's, let's carve a hole in the sidewalk and put the street lights in. So it uh, makes total sense to me. Uh, <laughs> why wouldn't we do a bad job since we're doing it? But uh, we went to CMEX last week uh, and asked them if there were a way that in their property between their fence line and the sidewalk, east of the sidewalk itself, could we go in there and put down the, uh, the street lights uh, footing in there and not impede into the sidewalk? And that way we'll leave, even though it's only three feet, we'll leave the full three foot width. They've given us a verbal permission to do that uh, at no charge. So uh, they're being good neighbors uh, and that kind of thing. So we'll get started on that sooner rather than later. Um, as far as the your comments and the, you know, either, this is either the, the time if you want to mention them in a public forum, we can have a, you know, you, a, a separate meeting. If you have 
personal, you know, wishes that you want to put on the list of, of items, and then we present them to the entire board, however you choose. And I, I know you brought up the, the lighting project because, again, as I mentioned, this was something that didn't come to us until very recently. And when, my, when we were already working on a tight, on a tight budget, and that's what happens is, is you, you, have, you have lots of projects that come, uh, usually between May and July, that say we want to do these these items and we have to make a decision staff wise which ones are important to present to the board to make the decision on on what you believe is important as well so uh, and as you know some of them again we've already been working on you're very well aware of some of them you may have recommendations and changes um, for the future on them and we have the ability to do that until we get final approval we also have the ability to do that mid-year if something comes up as we as we do always so on the um, chairman avenue streetscape uh, i will alert you to the fact uh, if you don't know already there is some uh, conversation between the city and the county and and they have expressed some uh, desires for what they want tamarind to look like so let's make sure that we are all in um, conformity at least all at the table because I don't want one part of the city to be agreeing to certain things with the county and we've got you know 2.2 .2 million dollars here to spend just so uh, and I think Mr. Kelly yes is coordinating that and maybe you're already aware of that but let's just make sure the right hand knows what the left hand yes. is doing yes will do mayor and and you're correct um when dang and scott kelly are working and this, okay. this that is more the portion between okeechobee and banyan because of the because of the bus station that is there and yes. the transit so i know that they are they okay. are working all right, on that good. You're aware uh, just so you're aware the other part of the tamman streetscape project <clears throat> is from banyan to palm beach lakes that is a major utility project uh, we've got a water main 100 year old water main that's going to the water treatment plant so it's going to be joint funding between utilities um, and the CRA on that project. So we're, like I said, we're still trying to figure out um, how that's going to work, and we'll come back to you on that. And let's also make sure we have proper irrigation. Correct. We, we, we do. Uh, moving on to the downtown core, uh, we have some of the major projects would be, again, uh, programming and maintenance for, for the waterfront. Um, it not only includes the events, which Mary will go over, but it also includes funding we provide to parks to maintain the landscaping. A couple of years ago, we, um, this agency provided $500,000 to up enhance the landscaping along the waterfront. Um, they've got temporary employees out there maintaining it on a daily basis now so um, it still looks very good <coughs> they're keeping the teak on the benches the trash cans clean the landscaping updated so we're continuing to fund that ongoing maintenance along the waterfront for the time being um, on the infrastructure and streetscape 314 clematis um, again this is a you know this is a number that we don't know what this number is going to look like yet and this is would be for the uh, remaining build out of that project uh, we've we close on the property on September 4th, I believe, next week, and um, we're we're going to have to move in towards the design and um, repair phase. So that'll all be coming back before you. This is a placeholder for um, for potential funding for that project. Um, and again, from the bond, we have the the clematis purchase, which is closing. Uh, the Clematis Streetscape Phase 2, which is already encumbered, we're in the middle of that project. Uh, Clematis Streetscape Phase 3, which we are, um, we have the design team getting their contract finalized. We're beginning that phase as well, which is the 400 and 500 block. Downtown Alley Initiative, which you saw last meeting that we will be starting uh, mid-September. Uh, Ivernia Daytura Streetscape and Rosemary Phase 3 Skeet Streetscape, and neither of those projects has has, have been started yet. It's just been allocated as part of the bond funding. Uh, DDA target area, I'm gonna come back to this because this is Raphael's presentation. I'll run through the last slide here. Um, other target area, again, you have your consultants. Um, I will, again, I will provide that, that list of you of, of the consultants that we typically use out of those, out of those services. Uh, trolley expansion. 
This again is a, is a number we're not sure of, but we know that as we're getting two additional trolleys by December, um, we believe we're working with the engineering department. We believe the, tra the routes are going to change slightly, and this is, a, this is a moving target kind of. So we just want to make sure that the funding is available and we work with the city to make sure the trolley program continues as it needs to. And then Banyan Streetscape, that's another project that you'll be seeing um, in the next couple of months uh, at Face of the City. We had a public presentation. It's going to DAC um, September or October. I believe it may wait till October, but uh, you'll see it in the next couple of months as well. So with that, I can, unless you have questions on this, and then I'll go to Raphael. Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your presentation. I have a question as it, we were talking about the reserves amount on the Northwood Pleasant City, and it was 645,000, and I noticed the reserve amount for this budget is 620. So I was just curious, how do we determine what amount to put into reserves? Is it truly just what's left over after the projects, or do we try to set a certain amount, a percentage of the whole budget? Uh, typically, and, and again, we are we are budgeting our entire uh, entire funding. We are to spend their entire funding. There there is always some left that we haven't programmed. That we're anticipating certain projects moving forward. We will keep that in there if we anticipate some certain projects <coughs> moving forward that we're not sure about. However, we just are. Uh, to be honest, very tight in this downtown budget. We have a lot of projects that are happening right now. We just don't have a lot for, um, I guess, projects that might come up throughout the year. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Rafael Clemente, Executive Director of the Downtown Development Authority. And I'm going to apologize in advance for what is visually an ugly presentation. I mistakenly assumed that the budget detail for the DDA, but the DDA work plan was in the CRA budget, and I assumed that until about 3 o'clock today. So when I went to pull out the detail from another presentation, naturally, that didn't work for me either. So what you're going to see is what might appear to be uh, cobbled together, but all the content is exactly what needs to be there. So um, as you know, uh, the Downtown Development Authority um, has a relationship with the CRA in the city that is based on a work plan and an interlocal agreement. Um, that interlocal agreement is, in fact, coming back to you shortly um, for review and renewal for another five-year term. Um, that was, we're working on getting that done sometime, maybe in September, but we've actually, uh, we're working with city staff if we need more time on that. Um, our work plan areas uh, in, our, in, in our new budget and in that uh, coming in our local term are broken down into four uh, uh, distinct areas, public realm maintenance, neighborhood services, business development, and marketing and public relations. And what I'm going to do um, is briefly describe the work plan areas and then go into the budget detail. Um, public realm maintenance, uh, we all know this is a key piece of how people experience and perceive their place. And what we've done is streamline this uh, much more than we've ever done before, just into the core areas that are delivering the, the best outcomes. This is cleaning and maintenance, signage and wayfinding, landscape maintenance, removing graffiti, and small capital projects. And when I say small, this is like a uh, street light where you need one, a bench where you need one. This is not anything like what the CRA or the city is doing. Neighborhood services, as our downtown is shifting to be, I think, the largest neighborhood in our city, so are our services shifting to provide a greater impact for quality of life and for uh, the fact that we have approaching 10,000 residents in our district. Um, that includes programming, community engagement, public space programs, meaning can we help <coughs> Um, seed activity in areas that are currently inactive. This helps, not only helps make the area feel better, but it helps people sort of claim that space for their own use in their, in their, in their neighborhood. Um, public space, uh, I'm sorry, uh, transportation. We put that into neighborhood services because that is increasingly a challenge within our district. 
how do we get people from the west side of downtown uh, out by Australian Avenue into the core? We know people are getting into downtown, but when they're here, how are they moving around? That's not just the trolley, but we're looking to partner with Lyft. We're looking to partner with the Hampton Freeride guys, the electric shuttle, to be more effective in moving people within the district. Security and policing, obviously, that is our uh, work with uh, PSC and with the police department, and then homeless outreach. Like the city and the CRA, we've worked closely with the Lord's Place to develop a specific outreach program. This year, um, what we're almost certainly going to do through that interlocal is merge what is our budget for that item with what the city is already doing. We've worked, we're working with Armando and Jennifer Ferriol um, to just make one big program because homelessness we know is a fluid thing. It's not just in downtown or just in Northwood. It's everywhere, so we're gonna just contribute to what is already a good program. Business development, and these uh, five items are taken straight from the city's economic development plan. Um, that uh, I don't know if that's exactly out yet, but uh, talent attraction, a healthy business climate, supportive infrastructure, and quali quality of place, innovation and entrepreneurship. We have, we have made sure that our plan supports exactly what the city's plan is. Um, and we're focused on working with those who are already selling our place, leasing and brokers, uh, leasing and brokers meetings, business training and support, business development and center programs. And these are down to just two and they are laser focused on leasehold improvements for ground floor spaces that we can't seem to find a tenant for and facade programs. And then partnerships working with the business community to help draw in new businesses. And then finally, marketing and PR. This is advertising, retail promotions, community and cultural promotions, meaning focusing on the, uh, the cultural institutions within the area of the downtown to help raise the profile. <coughs> and then value added events. And I'll use the one I love to use the most is pairings. That's the event we do at the end of the springtime to bring that added customer base downtown. So straight into budget. Um, and this is the ugly part I talked about because it was put together uh, shortly after my meeting with Commissioner Nearing. Um, so uh, as I said, our inner local defines a relationship between the DDA and the city and CRA. Our tax revenues this year, like, like the CRAs, are up about 11%. That second number there, the TIF number in, in parentheses, is our payment to the CRA. That's required not only by our inner local but by Florida statutes. And then that $4.273 million number is what we get back from the CRA. That is our first mill and the match of the second mill that we stopped levying seven or eight years ago now, more than that actually, 10 years ago. Um, other, other revenues in our budget, we, we have line items to receive money. However, we don't know what that money is right now, we've, but we've, we have set our budget up to receive those funds in. Those could be sponsorships, that could be shuttle agreements, grants, et cetera. Throughout the year, those come in and we do budget amendments to receive them. CRA project funding, that are, those are dollars for services over and above the two mil interlocal agreement. That $409,000 is down about $60,000 from the previous year. Our revenues obviously went up on our, on our, on our tax base but we're also just getting better with our programs. Um, so for a total, and then our, our carry forward number is just shy of $900,000, a total budget amount for this year of $5.7 million. And how that is uh, allocated in our, uh, uh, to our programs, business development, um, uh, a key focus, but as is, as is stated in the city's economic development plan, Talent attraction and business recruitment are so tied to place. As we've refined our business development uh, uh, budget, we have learned that in incentives close a gap. The place is what really is the driving force be behind people choosing to locate a business there or invest in a, in a place. Um, and we have refined our, our, our uh, incentives to hit the things we can not hit and then work more closely with the CRA, with Chris Rugg and the Economic Development Department to leverage what they're doing by providing a complement to that. Um, and, and you can see exactly where these are. We have about a half million dollars this year in business development. 
public realm maintenance, and this, con this continues to grow for us because all of our data, all of our research, all of our community input says we need to do more in the public realm. Um, Holiday Lights is, is beautification, obvi obviously, leveraging what Mary and her team are doing on the waterfront during the holiday season. Pressure washing, cleaning, and maintenance, increasingly an important one. As our residential district grows, so does the need to have a place that is perceived as welcoming and safe. Um, we have expanded those programs, not just to do, not just to, to provide services more frequently, but to also uh, cover more of the downtown district. Signage and pedestrian wayfinding, that's trolley signage, that is um, uh, wayfinding for parking, also working uh, um, with community events and others when, we're, when there's things happening on the waterfront. Landscape maintenance, again, one that's uh, expanded for us. We, like the CRA, work with Scott Lewis Landscape and Gardening, and we're going to be expanding that program this year to cover areas specifically around city parking garages to make them more appealing, as those are ports of entry for people coming and going from our place. Graffiti removal is exactly what it is. Uh, capital projects, small line item there, and then our clean team. This is the uh, collaboration we have with the Lord's Place, and we are looking also to expand that program to cover parking garage stairwells, the train station, and a larger area of our district. Marketing and PR, um, advertising, uh, our public relations, our advertising is ad buys. I hope you've seen our ads running on all Comcast platforms. Um, PR and marketing, that is in part a contract with our, our PR consultant, the O'Donnell Agency, and that is focused directly on earned media. Retail promotions is working to bring um, those additional customers to our downtown community and cultural, as I explained before, working with Trauma Works, um, Photographic Center, et cetera, Kravis Center. Value added events uh, is a, a specific area of focus um, where we uh, feature something like pairings as I use as our example about a thousand people a year come to that event and keeps downtown merchants top of mind for them uh, marketing programs equipment and web that is web-based um, what do we call that meltwater other measurable types of, of things and then collateral neighborhood services is one of the areas that we've refocused this year um, with our our uh, what what we've categorized as neighborhood services Residential programming and community engagement is targeting specific um, initiatives for our residential population downtown. Uh, trolley is what it is, um, transportation and trolley. Um, and like uh, Allison said, we're not exactly sure what those routes will be, but we are um, allocating funds to be able to cover any changes or expansions. Security and policing covers our contract for private ambassadors as well as possible police overtime, if that's a need that we are asked to fulfill. Um, public space programs, these are increasingly pilot projects. If you all remember the, park, the parklet program that we did as a pilot, um, we're also looking to do similar, uh, similar tests of uses in areas like um, the west side of the Banyan Garage, the area over by City Palms, west of the uh, CSX Railway, can we seed activity in areas of downtown where there is none? And then homeless outreach, which I mentioned earlier. Operations, our general office and operations budget. This is everything from uh, our office equipment, rent, dues, a hospitality line item, publications, telephone costs, et cetera. And then personnel, insurance, rent, and other costs, making up uh, a sum total of $5.8 million. And then how that breaks down, um, uh, I, I always think of things of how much are we spending on what. Um, roughly 50% of our budget this year is targeting quality of life or public realm improvements that are tangible outcomes within our district. 20% of that, of, of the budget going to uh, marketing and promoting the place as a destination for visitors and investment. Um, and then of course business development Professional services, some of that are things that we are required to do like audits, legal, et cetera. Others are small consulting agreements that we have just to help us understand a little bit better about what we're doing. And then of course operations uh, is exactly that, rent, personnel costs, et cetera. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Commissioner Nearing. 
Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, for your presentation. Could you could you talk about um, so when the DDA makes decisions around who you're going to consult with, who you're going to use, for example, landscape maintenance, you know, in a contract like that. Is that the board that decides that? Like, what's your threshold? Like, is it under a certain amount that staff decide and beyond a certain amount it goes to your board or to a committee? I'm just curious how yes. that works. That's a, good, that's a very good commission, uh, question, Commissioner. So um, we do have a procurement uh, guide, a set of procurement guidelines as a publicly funded organization. So um, staff, myself as executive director, has discretionary uh, decision making up to $50,000. But typically anything that is above $25,000, I bring to the board just as an FYI. We're signing an agreement. We're signing a contract. Um, but at various levels, whether it's a $1,500 graphic design contract uh, or a full uh, bid proposal for uh, landscape maintenance that's a $200,000 contract, um, we, have pro we have protocols. So... If it's above $50,000, that has to be a full RFP or bid process okay. that is done with a review committee, goes to our board for approval. Below that, it breaks down. Obviously, the more valuable it is, the more work we do on it. Even if it's a small contract, we, we typically get several estimates and then choose a vendor. Um, like everyone else, we have vendors we know uh, work well with us or in our district or they, you know, they have a specific set of skills that we need for that job. But nonetheless, we do adhere to a, a procurement protocol. And okay. if that answered your question in enough detail. It does. And then I just, I, I won't make it now, but I want to make a general thought about that as it relates to all this. But yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Raphael, for your presentation. Um, I have one specific question for you, but before that, I just I have a general comment as well about the incentive grants. And I love seeing that we have so many different incentive grants for our businesses through each of the CRAs and through the DDA and through the city. Mayor, as I know that we're taking a look at our website and the way that we communicate things to our residents and to business owners. You know, I just want to make a comment that we think about that folks might not know to look under a specific page or in a specific department for that kind of information. And if there's kind of one area that people can go to where they can easily search or find that, that would be helpful because we do offer a lot of great programs and I'm appreciative of that. Um, Raphael, was, you, you kind of mentioned it in passing, um, and I'm familiar with that the DDA is only um, levying the one mill when you could levy two. I'm just curious if you could briefly describe that for many of the public who might not understand what you're talking about. Sure. Um, so uh, the, when the DDA was formed, we, we, we were formed as a special district uh, in uh, the late 1960s, 1967. Um, and started um, levying one mill. Um, at the same time, Miami's DDA formed, Tam uh, Orlando's DDA formed, et cetera. This was to shore up against disinvestment in downtowns related to suburban sprawl. Um, in the mid-90s, this, this downtown district voted in a referendum to double the millage from, two, from one to two for specific outcomes um, a downtown shuttle or downtown circulator, and my, my newest board member might remember this, uh, Mr. Jacobson. Um, well, I, that wasn't my intention with that comment, but <laughs> your wealth of knowledge is what I was implying. <laughs> um, so uh, it, that was in the mid-90s, right before we started seeing tremendous residential growth. So by about 2000 or so, we had lots of condo units coming out of the ground, values increasing dramatically. Our budget at two mills exploded. Um, residents at that time were questioning, was this something that, were they getting value out of this? So after uh, a lot of work on, on uh, how we could reduce our budget and sitting down with the city and CRA, it was decided that we would reduce our millage rate by, by half from two back to one um, and enter into this, uh, this relationship that we continue to be in with the CRA uh, and, and city to provide services to the district while reducing our tax burden, keeping it keeping at, at, at one mill and still providing effectively the same outcomes that we could at two mills. Um, now, being that we have 
um, half our budget coming from the CRA, um, that, uh, that agreed upon scope of work or the work plan I described is effectively the agreement for that second mill value that we receive annually as part of our budget. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Clemente. Very fine. My pleasure. And apologies for the less than visually appealing presentation. It's okay. It helped you with your brevity. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ward, while they're coming up, how long do we anticipate the next item? Because um, we I'm have a uh, significant uh, final item, uh, 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 Mayor. Uh, so. Um, okay. Can we expedite gonna, this portion of the? Please. I will be very quick. Thank you. Here to talk about the waterfront and uh, events. Um, basically, just to show you quickly an overview of the events and the attendance that we generally see annually. Um, I think you all are familiar with all of those different events that we have. Also, what's not in here is the Lake Pavilion, which we manage and run and about 120 events permitted this year. So if you add in the attendance from those events, we're attracting, I'm sure, over a half a million people to the West Palm Beach waterfront annually. And those are just for our events. We also permit, schedule, and coordinate city services for about another almost 100 events that we don't produce. And you've been to those too, Sunfest, the Boat Show, Race for the Cure. Uh, basically, if it happens on public property downtown, my office touches it. And then in this year, upcoming year's budget, this is the overall revenue from our projects that are anticipated along with the Palm Harbor Marina uh, contribution. We're the good news people, usually. Um, this is a, a snapshot of year to date from October last year to now from more communications of our PR results. And you can see that the uh, value of this media is more than $2 million, and it hit more than 79, 79 million people with our projects. And um, the value in the circulation, you can see Holiday in Paradise leads the charge. That's our favorite girl, Sandy. And then you can see the other peaks correlate to basically the opening of the green market and then the summer in paradise activities, the things that get the big unusual push. And you can also see the breakdown there of our um, Palm Beach Post, Channel 25, Sun Sentinel, Channel 5, et cetera. With that, we have media partners. These are people that we work with on an annual basis that provide us marketing uh, ads in kind so we don't actually pay for these. The Palm Beach Post, which is, as you can see, more than $115,000 worth of print and digital ads plus the coloring contest. The Daily News comes in with $30,000 worth of ads, Channel 25, $55,000. Hubbard Radio is a fantastic partner with their seven stations. They provide more than $2 million in sponsored ads and promotions annually. Discover the Palm Beaches has also been a fabulous partner for a total PR and marketing for events valued at more than $4 million. I felt like a commercial myself right there. Um, and then just to highlight some of the things that are coming up, it's anniversary THYME time this year, uh, not just for the West Palm Beach Green Market, which will celebrate its 25th season, but also the city in general will celebrate its 125th anniversary, which we will kick off at opening day of the Green Market Mark Your Calendars, which is October the 5th, which of course is a Saturday. Clematis by Night turns 25 also. It's kind of hard to believe. Um, it's our heritage event, and June 4th, we will kick it off with a party for the ages. And some other exciting news, um, Clematis by Night will once again be the official host committee for the Super Bowl's event in Palm Beach County, it's scheduled for January 30th. And I don't know if you've heard, it's Super Bowl, it's LIV. So they're saying down in Miami that the Super Bowl lives here. Well, the Super Bowl lives at Clematis by Night, as this will be the fourth time that we will be the official host committee event going back to the 90s. And yes, I have been at all of them. <laughs> so we're really excited about that. And the finale for the 125th anniversary will be at our longest running heritage event, which is Fourth on Flagler. 
And uh, of course, that won't be July 4th, 2020. And don't forget Sandy. She's surfing back into town real soon with new friends and surprises. Just a little hint there for you. She's surfing back into town. <laughs> And that's it for us. And um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to give them a shot. Any questions? Madam President. I just want to say congratulations. I think I saw you post on social media that you and your team won some awards. And I don't know how you come up with so many creative slogans and funny rhymes. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Very fun presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Do we have anything else from downtown? Mayor, commissioners, that concludes our budget presentation. Very good, very good. Let's proceed right into item number four. Resolution number 1935, approving an amendment to the right-of-way maintenance agreement among the City Place CDD, the West Palm Beach CRA, and the City to include Rosemary Square Phase Two improvements. It's a consent a item, one? Commissioner, uh, Mayor. Just a quick one? Yes, sir. It's okay. a, it is on consent, uh, Mayor, so we won't have anything on this item. Oh, this is consent. Okay, I'll, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number five, resolution number 19-31, approving a term sheet for the development of the anchor site and lease agreement with ML Corps Ventures. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, this afternoon we are uh, considering the term sheet for the development of the uh, anchor site. Uh, if, if it is a, in agreement with you, then we will develop a development agreement from this and bring it back for your approval. Um, in, in very quick description, as you have seen uh, the presentations before of the project, uh, you can see that the anchor site is a very significant mixed use project on the western end of Northwood Village uh, containing a significant number of uh, residential apartments and uh, a significant amount of office space and retail uh, with a grocery market uh, which is much uh, desired by the community, a freestanding parking garage with approximately 570 parking spaces and a very nice public plaza with a public art component in it. And it looks like this. Um, you can see on the uh, upper right the, uh, the garage, the two main residential towers in the center, and then uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the north and left there, uh, uh, the other tower, and then two small towers on the left-hand side of your slide uh, um, that will be uh, office space. And here's a look from the, uh, look toward the plaza, looking through the residential buildings toward the parking garage. And uh, I'll show you a floor plan briefly in a second. And you can see that the plaza actually goes all the way through. We're, we're hoping to attract uh, a train station there as well. And the, and the garage will be built to accommodate that. Looking east from the plaza toward, uh, you can see on the right in the center there, one of the four-story uh, office uh, buildings that are uh, small adjunct buildings to the project. And looking south on Broadway, uh, anticipated, and this will all be part of the development process uh, there, anticipating um, that uh, tower there that will flank uh, Pleasant City. And as the site plan appears, uh, you can see on the left-hand side here, that's the garage. And I described to you that um, the plaza can go all the way through to the train station on the left-hand side, should we uh, be fortunate enough to get one. The green area on the first floor is the location for the, uh, for the grocery store. Uh, and then uh, you can see uh, the apartments and the towers in the other area. And upper floors here, here's the standard floor for the garage. Uh, the garage will, of course, be built with flat floors to give them the ability to, uh, to do other things with them should we see what happens with uh, self-driving cars and all the things that we were all talking about may happen in the future. You can see the standard floor layouts on the apartments and the offices. You can also see the uh, pools. You may have noticed them in the, um, in the rendering, the pools on top of each of the, um, of the towers in the center there. So uh, briefly, the anchor site terms are that the developer will enter into a 50-year lease uh, for the CRA-owned property. Uh, they will have the option to purchase the property from the CRA for $6.3 <coughs> million. The purchase price is anticipated uh, may be uh, forgiven by the CRA board if the project is completed on a timely basis. 
the construction project will be in no more than two phases. Um, uh, we had initially talked about more than that, but we're down to two phases now. Uh, and they've agreed that all construction will be completed uh, in no more than 54 months after the building permit is issued for phase one. Uh, and of course, that's subject to force majeure. Uh, and the CRA, for our part, will uh, reimburse the developer for half of the building permit fees in an, out, in an amount not to exceed a million dollars. Um, and we will forgive the purchase price for the property if the project is completed on a timely basis uh, and is the will of this board. And that, in a nutshell, is the project. It is uh, very exciting. I've got the developers with us today. If you have questions for them, they are anxious to get moving on it. Uh, and uh, so I think, we're, I think we're ready to go. Questions? Uh, Commissioner Peduzzi. Just a clarification, the purchase option is 6.3 million and not the 4 million in our paperwork? Yes, sir, that was a, uh, that was a Scribner's error. My apologies. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Shove. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I want to say thank you to the CRA for, for pushing this forward. I've been a big proponent of getting this project moving as it, it is pivotal to the development of the North End. Um, as liaison to the CRA Advisory Board, I wanted to know this was brought before the CRA Advisory Board um, during their summer meeting. They didn't have a quorum to vote in support uh, one way or the other, um, but there was some, some great comments that came out of that and very positive um, things. Um, in my review, um, one of the things that I think is most important to this development is speed and getting um, this developed as soon as possible um, compared to some other things that we've seen. I liked that we had two phases um, that got executed and are significant phases um, as well as the timeline. There were some other things within the development agreement um, that I just want to point out. Um, there are discounted rents provided to first responders and teachers. And I think that's extremely important as we look at our affordable housing options, as well as um, looking at the actual phasing of the project, where before we've looked at this plot of land that, that had phasing that was towards the western end of the tracks and then the eastern portion. I think this gives an, a nice flow of phasing to make sure that when phase one is completed, it doesn't look like it's, it's missing anything. So. Um, all in all, I was, I was pleased to, to look at the terms and, and hope that this moves forward in a quick fashion, as again, um, North End neighbors are very excited. So thank you. Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for the presentation. Yeah, I definitely have heard from residents who are excited to see this move forward. So I'm appreciative of the timeline that was included in there as well as the two phases. Um, of course, we want to make sure that we do everything we can to help make sure this moves forward. But in the case where something happens unforeseen, can you describe the clawback process or the ownership of the land and how that works in, in this particular project? Uh, Mayor, Commissioner, uh, that, is the, uh, that is the reason that we're entering into a lease on the property uh, with, uh, with the developer. We are not transferring ownership um, of the property until the, uh, the CO is in on the project, but it gives them, through the long-term lease, the ability to control the land, and that's what uh, the bank and funding folks want to see, is they have the ability under a long-term lease. It's the same thing as owning, uh, owning the dirt, as far as they're concerned. Great. I hope it doesn't come to that. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Neary. Uh, thank you. Uh, also, um, very exciting. Glad that we're, we're here uh, today. T two points. One is um, you referred to um, completion in a timely basis. Is that based on the 54 months, or is there a, a another time frame? No, sir. It's based on the 54 months that will be outlined specifically in the development agreement. That's, uh, that's if they do what they right. say they're going to do in the development agreement that you have with them. Okay, great, thank you. And, and then the second thing to the developer, and I'm very appreciative because we, we had some other proposals that I did, did not think took into account um, the entire community, uh, including Pleasant City, ensuring that we don't box off Pleasant City in our um, haste to make this project come to fruition. And so I'm very appreciative of that. I do see this as an inflection point for the entire community and the entire city and uh, really channeling 
good vibes that we can pull this off and, and get this thing done. Uh, Commissioner Show. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ward, if you could describe the process going forward as far as the timeline, uh, if, if this passes today, um, when we would get into that development agreement and when potentially shovels could be in the ground. And secondarily to that, I don't know, it may be a legal question, at what point um, the developer is able to engage with the community out of the Kona silence, uh, et cetera. I can talk to the Kona Silence first if you'd like. The um, procurement code and the city's code provides that the Kona Silence remain in effect until such time as your development agreement and uh, lease is actually executed and signed. So after that is done is when they can speak to you. Otherwise, they speak through John and through the procurement official a and the lawyers as needed as we do the agreement. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, it's, uh, it's our anticipation that uh, the terms are uh, essentially the scope of service for the project and um, uh, the, um, the development agreement is, I don't want to say it's uh, strictly a boilerplate kind of a piece, but uh, it's pretty well in place now. So I think that we can get, uh, we will get the development agreement back in front of you in the month of September uh, and anticipate you'll, you'll be signing off on that and they'll be moving forward. Now, obviously, they have not spent a lot of extra money on their professionals and that sort of thing. They have to, uh, they have to now get their design and make sure that it, it matches our code. Uh, it does not as it stands right now. So there's some changes that will have to be done. And, uh, and that pre-development piece is what will start in September. Uh, I would anticipate that it will take the better part of a year to do all of the things that they need to do by the time they get uh, permitted and pre-development work done. So. Um, I wouldn't anticipate uh, machines moving out there too much sooner than next fall. Um, Mr. Gottsman, if you want to uh, stand up and, and uh, tell me if I'm wrong. I right. Uh, right, I'm, I'm right, so. <laughs> okay. Good answer. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I'm happy to recommend approval that the board approve resolution 19-31, approving a term sheet for development of the anchor site. There's a second. Second. Uh, may I suggest a, a clarification addition to your motion that the term sheet is the 6.3 million as opposed to 4 million in the purchase price? Mayor, I'd like to amend my motion and move that we approve resolution 19-31 with the amendment of a purchase price of 6.3 million, approving a term sheet for development of the anchor site. Second. We moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. We will reconvene for the city commission meeting at 5 p.m. Thank you.